In this diagram, I am showing you what the data look like themselves when they are plotted. And then here is the residual plot. We can see from the data plot itself that the variation of the points from the line becomes greater and greater as we go to longer tube length. And it shows up very clearly here. The assumption that the variance is the same for all values of x is clearly not correct here. For low values of x, the variance is low, and it systematically gets larger as the values get high. So the homogeneity of variance assumption is definitely being violated here. And we can see that visually from the residual plot. It's a little less straightforward to tell from looking at this plot about the normality, but we have other tools for that. Once we have determined the values of the residuals, we can perform the histogram function on those residuals. And that will give us a graphic representation of what the distribution of the residuals looks like. And they do not look very normally distributed. They look like they're skewed to the right here because there's a rather long tail on the right side. We can do a more in-depth analysis using the plot function that's built into R and have it plot not the points nor the residuals, but have it actually do a plot of the model itself. If we pass in the model itself as an argument of the plot function, then we get a prompt down in the console that says we should hit return to see the next plot. When I hit return the first time, I can, I can see the residual plot. So rather than having to pull out the residuals and plot them manually, if I plot the model, I can automatically get a plot of the residuals. And the red line here is sort of the best fit center of the points. And we can see how, whether they are balanced with respect to that, that sort of zero deviation line. If I hit enter a second time, then I get a normal quantile plot of the residuals. This is similar to the normal quantile plots we saw of the data themselves in other circumstances. And as we learned then, the deviation of the residuals from this line here is an indication of how much they deviate from normal. So we can see that the deviation from normal gets really bad over here on the right side of the curve. There are two additional plots that you'll get when you hit enter, but we're not going to concern ourselves with what they mean. We'll just display them and then move on. And finally, we can do the Shapiro-Wilkes test on the residuals. And that tells us that they are not at all normally distributed. They are significantly different from normally distributed. Here's a summary of what we saw in our results of looking at the residuals of the uh, untransformed data. We generated the normal quantile plot. We saw that was bad. The histogram showed it was skewed to the right. Shapiro-Wilkes test was highly significant. So it looks like we are going to try, we're going to need to do some kind of transformation on these data if we can. I mentioned when we were first talking about the experimental measurements that the values of y were counts. And when we looked at suggested transformation, the square root transformation was suggested as a good one to do when you have problems with data that are counts. The one pitfall of the square root transformation is if you have negative data. If you have negative data, then you can't take the square root of a negative number and get anything other than an imaginary number. In that case, you need to add a constant value to your numbers that you're transforming to make them into positive values, and then you can do the square root transformation. In the case of counts, since the lowest possible count that we can have is zero, we don't actually need to add any constant to the numbers. We can just take the square root directly.